Michael, the reason I wanted to interview you in particular is because I saw your film Down the Doro. Is that how I'm pronouncing it? Down the Doro, yes. Duro, yeah. Um, and at the end it said filmed on my iPhone. Yes. And that was a real surprise to me. So I thought I must ask you about it. So how did that come about? Well, I thought that you'd be surprised. Anyone seeing the film would be surprised. That's why I put it on the end, yeah. that it was filmed entirely on an iPhone. Uh, I don't take cameras on holiday because I think you either have a holiday or you make a film. Can't do both, really. And so I didn't take a camera, and we were going down the Juro on this uh, nice cruising ship. It's the main river in Portugal. Uh, uh, the wine growing area of Portugal, it's very nice. Uh, and um, I, the scenery was so nice and so fantastic that I thought I should really have some pictures and I had my iPhone, um, iPhone 10, I think it is or something, which makes the most incredible pictures. I mean, I, I have used it for test filming before, but never. So I thought I'd just film the the scene and then gradually got involved in making a more or less a sort of formal film of the boat and the and the region and, and everything and um, the pictures are amazing on an iPhone I mean as long as you don't zoom if you try and zoom and uh, in it's only um, going into the uh, realms of creating noise and, um, and degrading the picture so it's not like a, a lens, a telephoto lens zooming. Um, this this actually um, takes a small part of the of the frame and enlarges it, which is not never a good idea. So um, provided you keep on on the wide angle sit setting, it's, it was great. The sound is is not very good, so I only used the background sound, and then when I got home, I um, put a, a proper sound on. But uh, it was just like making a film. With a proper camera. It's easier to hold steady actually I found. People are very surprised how steady the pictures were but it's quite easy to hold it steady and, uh, and it worked. So that's that's how I came to do it. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't planned or anything like that. I just thought I'd do it while I was there that's all. So for people who maybe don't know a lot about um, how you make your films what would you normally use? Uh, Oh, I normally use um, uh, my current camera is a Sony Z150. It's it's uh, um, how can I say it's <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a reasonably um, advanced Sony camera, but not uh, not incredibly so. I, I have had three of it's about my third Sony camera, I think, in in 20 years, 30 years, uh, and it's um, it's. It's a regular camera. I mean, you can do everything manual and auto if you want. It's quite versatile. Um, okay. But today, all the cameras are making good pictures. You know, it's not like the old days. I seem to remember a story that um, you began filmmaking in the film era, and oh, then yeah. when video came along, you stopped because the quality wasn't good enough. Yes, that's right. But now you've been able to use an iPhone, which I consider the next, you know, a, a new technology. Well, yes, I don't think an iPhone for serious filming would be good enough. First of all, the sound is is not is nothing really hardly. Um, although you can put microphones on them, actually, there's little mics that go on the, on them. But um, no, for proper filming, and also you can't control um, a lot of things, exposure and. Um, all sorts of things. I wouldn't use it for a proper film. Uh, and you can't differentiate the focus, you can't pull focus, you can't have a, 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 um, a, a background out of focus if you wish. I think you can actually, I think there are modification, there are things you can do in menus on them which, which probably would do most of those things, but I, I can't be bothered. I, I, no, I don't think a filmmaker would consciously use an iPhone for a film, really. So did you find it quite frustrating to use? No, no, it's, I wasn't. I wasn't making a film. I was just okay. filming, <laughs> just filming the holiday. So when I got back, I saw the stuff, which looked reasonably good. So I, I, uh, I thought, well, I'll cut it. That's all. It's, it's not being shown here anyway, and it got three stars or something. <laughs>
so I'm not that, um, but it, I just did it for fun really and as that was no bother, I didn't have to cart any gear about and we were on the boat anyway so transferring the footage uh, was a bit of a pain because I had to uh, go through a, a computer and then use something called edit ready to convert the, um, the codec into my chosen codec but um, I wouldn't use an iPhone generally speaking. So how was the um, the processing afterwards? Was it? Uh, yes. Well, I, most people, some people manage uh, better than I do. Um, depends on your edit system and what 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 it'll take. But uh, um, now I just had to convert the, the footage to to a codec. Um, you say that um, I started with film. Um, yes, um, film. When we think now of film rattling through a, a gate at God knows how many pence a second and now we can film as long as we want of course it doesn't always make it easier because you get too much with film you're, we're more selective but i started on that standard eight tiny tiny um, frame with a bolex camera in about 1964 and then um one of my films won a, a, a big national competition with the 10 best and they showed it at the National Film Theatre and in order to show it there they blew it up to 16 millimeter and it looked awful because blowing up standard 8 to 16 didn't, doesn't really work so I vowed to um, to change and so I, I went to 16 millimeter which was the commercial um, format of those days other than 35 for, for really big feature films and uh, then uh, it was rather more rewarding because 16 millimeter was really quite good in those days. Um, and, uh, but you had to use a laboratory to have prints and all sorts of stuff. It was really quite complicated. The editing had to be on a, uh, on a separate um, magnetic um, material which was uh, exactly the same as 60 millimeter film and you could wind them through together on an editor and uh, I keep it all in sync. It's all quite a performance. When I describe today to people, young people who don't remember film, how we made films, I mean, they, they are amazed that we managed it. But I think we had to take more care. And, and consequently, they were in a way better. I mean, most of my 16 millimeter films are probably better than my current ones on, on video, actually. Um, uh, it was, uh, I used to enjoy the editing and um, it was good fun. When we get old we lose a lot of um, a lot of inspiration. Um, I, I find it hard now to make a good film whereas it was so easy around 20 years ago I found it easy. What do you, I'm not sure what you mean by inspiration, does it mean, do you mean you don't get caught up in the film to... Oh yeah I get caught up but I, but, but I, I'm thinking like an old man and, and uh, too formal and, and not adventurous enough. And I don't know. I used to boast when I was young that I could be in a locked room uh, with one window or something and I could still make a film. Uh, but uh, the ideas don't come now so easily. I think that's, that's the problem. I mean, there were always, uh, I found, and unless I found a really nice subject, someone really interesting, maybe. But, um, it's, it's not so easy now, I don't think. When you come to the AF or to a festival mm. of films, any kind of festival, do you find yourself being inspired by films you see there? Oh yes, of course. I um, always look at other people's films. That's how, um, yes, um, especially, uh, yes, tomorrow, um, I mean Sunday, um, well, some of the fun. Except that stories, I, I'm not terribly inspired by, by drama. I don't think non-professionals make good drama films by and large. I always think they're a bit artificial and, and a bit, I don't know. Uh, they, I, most of them don't work in my view. Uh, I, I'm more interested in the documentaries and in the, the odd quirky thing we see, you know, uh, about people. Or, um, but uh, yes, oh yeah, certainly watching other people's films. Is, is essential, I think. I mean, I watch a lot of television documentaries and stuff, and other festivals. I go to quite a few uh, commercial festivals as well, and sometimes they show some of my stuff, but not much. <laughs> There's a big gap between uh, non-commercial and commercial, I think.